Hi, quilty friends. Welcome to part two of the Hexi Upcycle Challenge. If you didn't catch the first video, this is part of a video tutorial series for the Hexi Upcycle Challenge that I'm doing with Maud the Retro Quilter. In the first video that you saw, we actually learned how to cut our fabrics and to glue base our hexes. And now that we've sewn them all together, it's time to applique them to something that we already have in our home. It could be fabric from our stash and we make a mug rug. It could be a tote bag. It could be anything that you already have or maybe something used that you bought at a flea market or a thrift store. So let's get started and actually learn how we can machine applique these down to something else that we really would enjoy using these for. So now that you've got your hexi all stitched together, it's time to actually applique it to something. Now if you are watching this series of tutorials on how to make hexes, this is actually part of the series for the Hexi Upcycle Challenge that I am doing with Maud the Retro Quilter. We're hosting a fun challenge. And so if you're listening to this video, watching this video, this is part of that series. If you find it later, you'll enjoy this because you'll learn how to make a mug rug. So we're going to sew this down to something. Now, many of you that are in the challenge are actually gonna possibly sew yours to tote bags or a denim jacket or um, something else that you've picked to use as an upcycle item. I've got some scrap fabric here I'm using, so I didn't buy any. And this is actually one of the very first hexes that I ever made. If you look really close, you'll notice that I actually used thread that was a bit too thick when I was first learning. So the, mi the micro quilter thread um, is something I could have probably used, although as you know from my past videos, I choose to use the 60 weight. Anyway, this one's a little special because it was one of the first ones that I made. So I'm going to make a mug rug out of this. And we're gonna go over how you actually will applique this down with your sewing machine. Now, some people actually will choose to hand stitch theirs down. You could do that if you wanted to. I'm gonna show you how to machine stitch it down. Now, if you are choosing to applique your hexi to maybe a piece of clothing or something that's gonna get washed often, you may want to actually use a heavier weight thread. This is what I like to use. It's the Superior Thread Micro Quilter. It's a hundred weight, and that's because you can't really see it. This is a silver color, and I actually have a cream color in my machine that I'm gonna use for this one that will match really well. But again, this is Micro Quilter, and um, I use it with a 7010 Schmitz needle. And you could use a thicker thread if you want yours to show, or maybe you're going to be putting it on an item that's going to be washed a lot. Now, if you're going to quilt over your hexi for some reason, then of course it will keep it in place really well, and it won't really matter if you use a lighter weight thread. So let's go ahead and go to our sewing machine, and I'm going to show you how to stitch this down. Now, as far as what I'm stitching it to, this is a mug rug. So if you also want to make a mug rug, you're welcome to do that. I have eight by eight pieces of scrap fabric. So this is the front and this will be the back piece. And then also an eight by eight piece of scrap batting that I'll be using as well. So what you like to do is to be able to find the center. Anytime I'm sewing a hexi on something, to find the center if it's a square, like maybe it's a quilt or for this, you're gonna fold it in half and mark that there. And then you'll fold it in half again and mark the center. Just press that with your fingers. And when you open it up, you will be able to see that center right there. And what you'll wanna do is you can take your glue stick that you use to be able to make your hexi and you'll want to put just a little bit of glue on the back of your hexi just to kind of keep it down so you could just put a little bit all the way around just kind of keep it in place you could pin it if you want i'm actually just going to go ahead and use the glue and You'll find the center by lining up those center lines there. You see those creases with the center of your hexes on that side. And then as far as this line, you'll line up the center with that line there. And then I'm just gonna press that down 
And again, if you want to put a little pin here, you can. You can always take it out later. I'll just put in one of my pins just to make double sure. Keep it there in case that glue doesn't dry quick enough. And then what we're gonna do is again, I'm gonna use the 100 weight. You may choose to use something else, but I like it because you can't see it really well. And we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna show you how to applique this down. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll just start on one of the corners here. And as far as my bobbin thread, I actually just left what I had in there which is a cream color that is 50 weight. And it's fine because that's not gonna show. Go ahead and put my needle down. And then you will just stitch right along the edge. And then when you get to the end, you'll pivot. And you'll just sew, pivot again. And you do this all the way around your hexes until you get to the end. And you kind of have to, on that last stitch, you kind of have to eyeball it, like how far you actually can go so that you don't go off the edge. But you can see that you can't really see the thread, this particular micro quilter. It's so thin and this is actually a silver color, which is why I like it because it just doesn't show up very much. So go ahead and stitch all the way around your hexi, and then when we get to the end, I'll talk, to about, talk about what we do next. Okay, we have now sewn all the way around our hexi, and you can see this thread is just very forgiving. I actually overstitched just a little bit right here, and then I had to back stitch and find my way back, but you know that the thread is just barely visible at all. So you've now stitched this down, to whichever, whatever you've chosen to use. I'm actually gonna make a mug rug. And I did wanna mention, this is the one inch hexi that we've sewn together, all of those. If you chose to do the one and a half inch hexi and you want to make a mug rug, your piece of fabric that you cut for the front and the back and the batting would actually be 10 by 10. This is eight by eight. All right, let's talk about next steps. So there we go, there is our cute little hexi that's been appliqued to a piece of fabric. Now, depending on what you're sewing yours to, you may actually wanna be done with the video completely up to you. I'm gonna go ahead and make a mug rug out of this. So if you wanna keep following along, you're welcome to. If you've chosen to sew yours to maybe a tote bag or a um, tea towel or maybe a sundress or something, uh, you may choose to do some extra quilting on the top of it. Or if it's on a tote bag, which I've done before, you actually may want to do some quilting all the way around. So feel free. But I did want at least to show you how you could applique that down to a piece of fabric. So if you're going to go ahead and make the mug rug, again, this is an eight by eight piece of fabric. You've got your backing, your, um, your top of your mug rug, and then you've also got the eight inch square of bat batting. So you're going to place this right sides together, your top to your backing, and then your batting is actually on the far back side, okay? And then you're going to take this to your sewing machine, and I actually usually use clover clips, so you could clover clip all the way around, or if you want to pin it, you can. I find that when it's a little thicker like this, the clover clips seem to work a bit better. You'll take it to your sewing machine, and you're actually going to sew half an inch all the way around, but you're gonna wanna leave an opening that is approximately three inches right here because we're gonna need to be able to turn this right side out. So make sure you back stitch where you start and then you back stitch where you end. So we are now gonna go ahead and back stitch and I'm sewing half an inch around. I actually use this neat little gauge here to help me make sure that I'm staying at half an inch. So we will stitch half an inch all the way around. That could actually go one more stitch. And we'll come down this side. Okay, I am back almost to where I started. I'm gonna do a little back stitch there and I've left an opening so that I'll be able to turn this right side out. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the little hole there and just go ahead and gently pull this right side out. And then after you have sewn it all together and left that opening, you're gonna wanna go around the corners here 
and you're going to snip all of these corners around the edge of your mug rug. Just be careful that you don't snip where you've actually sewn there and that'll make it easier when we use our point turner to turn these out. Okay, so now that you have poked out all of your corners the best that you can, you've got this little opening right here, right? And so ultimately this is gonna need to be folded under half an inch because we will be top stitching that down. So take this to your sewing machine and give it a good press because it gets a little wrinkly from folding it right side out. Press this down, go ahead and fold that under half an inch and also press that down really well too. Now you have a couple options here depending on how you're gonna quilt this. So if you want to just kind of outline this you can stitch all the way around and that will quilt all of these layers together. So I suggest that you go ahead and figure out how you're gonna quilt it before you actually stitch this closed because your fabric may kind of move and shift a little bit. And so I suggest going ahead and quilting it how you'd like to quilt it and then go ahead and sew your top stitch all the way around here to close up this hole. That way, if you've done any quilting inside of here and it's pushed everything out a little bit, if you need to readjust or realign this before you do your top stitch all the way around, you can. So for me, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually just gonna outline where I had uh, the outline of the hexi all the way around, and then I'm going to top stitch all the way around, and I'll show you how I do that. Now here's where you can get creative. You can decide what kind of thread you wanna to use to quilt it. I decided to take out my micro quilter thread and, and not use the thread that I used to applique this down. I actually have this fun thread from Sulky, and it's, um, it's a 12 weight thread and I may cool to use this in my Juki. Now, some sewing machines may not like this thicker thread, but the fun part about it is it actually is really thick, almost like a you've hand stitched it a bit. And so I'm actually gonna give this a try. It's variegated, so the colors kind of change, but I think it matches really well with these prints in here. So I'm gonna use the Sulky 12 weight in mine, but you use whatever it is that you'd like to use to quilt yours. The bottom thread, I'm actually in the bobbin, I'm gonna leave at the 50 weight that I have in there, and it's also a cream color. Okay, so I have got my Sulky thread in here, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna line up the edge of my presser foot to be kind of my guide all the way around here. So it looks like it's gonna give me about a quarter inch that I'm gonna be sewing to really outline this on the outside. And then I'm also gonna use the same thread to do my top stitch all the way around. Now, again, I have a semi-industrial Juki and this can handle 12 weight thread. So you may wanna check your owner's manual if you're gonna to go to that type of thick weight thread, but that's what I'm gonna to choose to do for mine since that works for my machine. So. I'll just use this as a guide. And then just pivot. And just work my way around the entire hexi. You see how nice and thick that thread is? I actually picked this thread up at QuiltCon this year when I was in Phoenix. And I think that looks really nice, that chunky thread. You might even choose that you wanna hand quilt this to get that big stitch look if you like that. And I'm just gonna continue to go all the way around this hexi. And so now I'm back where I started, do a back stitch. And there we go. Just trim the threads here. And I really love the look of that thick stitch. That's what it looks like from the back. And the back has actually just got the 50 weight thread. I didn't change that out because I didn't think it would do too well in the bobbin. Isn't that nice? That thick 12 weight thread. Super happy with that. So now, since everything is really quilted the way I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch all the way around. And I'll probably top stitch about a quarter inch. And so I'll start here on this side. And I think I'm gonna try to start kind of in the white area because that's where I'm gonna be back stitching. 
and that way you won't see that extra back stitch. And I'll just stitch all along the edge there. Um, it might actually be between a quarter inch and an eighth of an inch. We'll see here. Whatever you prefer. And then just go ahead and top stitch all the way around. And here we go, quilty friends. You've got your little hexi now made into a mug rug. Now, I know some of you may have chosen to applique yours to other things, and so we really look forward to seeing all of the things you've upcycled, whether you've gotten it from a thrift store or a flea market, it's just something you found in your closet, or you use some scrap fabric like I did to make this little mug rug. So now I am all ready to get my cup of lavender chamomile tea, and I'm a big fan of toffee and I'm ready to curl up with a good book on the couch and have my little snack with my mug rug. Maud and I have very much enjoyed being with all of you for the Hexi Upcycle Challenge, and thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to forming new quilty friendships with many of you throughout this process these last three days, and maybe the community and the friends that you've built with one another have been real blessings for you. So feel free to leave any comments down in the comment section below, or if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'm Belle from Seam So Me, and Maud is from The Retro Quilter. Thank you so much for joining us for this challenge, and please feel free to like these videos and subscribe to both of our channels. And until next time, quilty friends, make lovely things.